Uh, let's talk about Keir Starmer for a minute because he's calling for closer European ties. He's been with his lefty um, sort of centrist dads like Justin Trudeau and I know Tony Blair was there as well at this summit in Canada. He's meeting Macron tomorrow. Uh, he's another sort of centrist dad. Um, is this gaining traction because he was under a huge amount of uh, criticism, certainly for the immigration stuff last week? Uh, he says it's garbage that there could be 120 further migrants coming to the UK. But what do you make of his performance and just assess what he's up to at the moment for us, Alicia? Yeah, well, this has been part of Keir Starmer's big jet set week, as, as we're all calling it in Parliament. It's him kind of gallivanting round and visiting these other world leaders, which has led many to believe that he's acting as if he's already the prime minister before the elections even happened. He's very much trying to assert himself as a leader and show that, you know, this is what I would look like as the prime minister mm. and meeting these other authorities. It's a difficult dance, isn't it, Alessia? Because you need to look sort of statesmanlike as if you could be the prime minister, but at the same time, you don't want to look too prime ministerial. It is a difficult one, but I mean, it certainly worked because it did ruffle some feathers in number 10. I mean, a, another journalist asked um, after Starmer first went off on his, his first kind of meeting with, with another head of state, they said, um, how, the prime, how did the prime minister feel about it? And it was very clear that the, it, there was a bit of tension there. They weren't too happy um, about the fact that Starmer had gone and done this. So, I mean, if that was his aim, it certainly has worked in that regard. But yeah, I think the most notable thing to come of it so far is this this alleged rewriting of the Brexit deal, as you said earlier, in 2025, the deal that was written up by Boris Johnson is set to renew. And Starmer has attacked it, and he said that the deal that we currently have is just not working. It's too thin, and it's restricting too much of our trade. It's restricting too much of our growth in the economy. And Starmer's now kind of gone back on his word, because he did previously say that he wouldn't rewrite the Brexit deal. He's now saying that he would and that by doing so, he'll kind of help to fuel the economy. Yeah, it's interesting with this because he's talking about closer ties with Europe, certainly on immigration, talking to them. And also he's talked a little bit about Britain's role in the world, not just as a non-EU country, but just kind of being left behind more generally, globally. Uh, what's your assessment of that, Alicia? I mean, I think it's a fair assessment at the moment. When you look at the UK's position on the world stage at the moment, yeah, you definitely can't say that we're, we're where we once were. So I think it's right coming up to a general election for a prospective future prime minister to be able to make that judgment and to be able to say, hang on, something needs to improve here in terms of our relations with other countries. But what is interesting about Starmer's approach is that at the same time as saying this, he's ruled out um, any... A option to rejoin the customs union, the single market, and said he doesn't want to rejoin the EU, but he does want to make those ties closer. So there's some confusion about what exactly his goal is here, and and what he is, what his end goal is. Is he just trying to be a people pleaser, or is he trying to actually do something that's going to benefit the country? Okay, well we'll see what uh, our viewers and listeners think about that. Alicia, thank you very very much indeed. This